It's located about halfway between Cusco and Machu Picchu in the Urubamba Valley. We are going straight to the Secret Valley and you will enjoy our landscape. You will see the countryside, you will see how are the houses of our local people, farmers, and the most beautiful, our snow-capped mountains. This season, dry season, is so colorful. You can see the blue sky, some few clouds, and it is the best to appreciate in a really nice way our snow-capped mountains. Enjoy your trip, enjoy your moment here in this part of Peru. Driving across the Altiplano here, it reaches as high as 12,500 feet high. And there's villages scattered through the area. They're farming at some of the highest farmlands in the world, growing mostly potatoes up here. Beautiful views of the Andes Mountains as we drive along through the Altiplano. And then we're approaching the valley of Urubamba, which will be at a slightly lower elevation. After lunch, we drive a few miles to Ollantaytambo. It's an ancient village with stone walls that date back to the Inca days that's still occupied today by the Quechua natives. It's not a large area. It's certainly less than one square mile. It's about a half square mile of paths and stone buildings following an original Inca urban plan. And next to it, is a huge Inca structure that goes up the hill with large stone terraces and a staircase that you can climb. Most likely this was a Inca temple. It was also used as a lookout point probably. And in the early historic period, there was a major battle fought here between the Inca and the Spanish. So it's considered to be a fortress as well. Originally, most likely it was a temple a large ceremonial structure overlooking the village of Ayantaytambo. We'll be climbing up this steep hillside to the temple in a little while, but first we're touring the village with our guide, Elga. You'll be able to drop in to some of the homes. There's one particular home that welcomes the visitors. You can go inside and look at their kitchen. They've got guinea pigs running around on the floor of the kitchen, the dirt floor. And there's even a young mama nursing her brood here. You can see this is quite the farm right in the kitchen. There's also cats with their kittens. They have a few little objects for sale. You could pick up a wooden flute or a woolen hat. There's small little dolls. All of these are handmade 
in Peru locally. You could buy them in the stores, but much nicer to buy them directly from a source here in the home. And an open domestic courtyard typical of many of the houses in this village. And our guide Elga tells us about various items inside the house. Going inside some of these buildings in the little village is always a much more rewarding experience than just walking outside on the alleys. And you'll have a chance to chat with the kids. They're always eager to have their photograph taken in return for a small tip. And you'd enjoy that as well. It's worth giving them a dollar or so for a nice photo with the kids. And then pretty soon you might find that the whole family would like to get in on the photographic action, which is even better yet. These are pictures that you're going to really enjoy. And then surprisingly, the modern age shows up in the midst of these ancient structures. It's kids in a internet game room having fun. After you've seen the village, it's time to turn your attention to the Temple on the Hill. This is a fantastic Inca structure with stone terraces going all the way up the hillside. You could easily walk over to this sacred hill or since we had our bus waiting for us, we took a short ride. And as we got off the bus, the locals are selling us some water. Fresh water. These industrious sidewalk merchants have a lot of goods for sale. You can buy hats and gloves and scarves and sweaters. There's a large handicraft market at the foot of the hill for those travelers who don't want to climb up high to see the sacred site. You could easily spend half an hour shopping around while the rest of the group 
climbs up the stone staircase. But before we climb up the hill, our guide talks to us down below about the history and the various functions of this amazing site. and has the finest style in architecture. The most beautiful place with the finest quality, in this case, were the ceremonial areas. But this area is considered the main ceremonial area. And as an administrative center with multiple tasks, had different buildings in order to house commoners. If there, you can see the size of the rocks are smaller. There is clay in between the rocks. Because just right there, you can see the size of the rocks are very irregular. But as soon as we, we will be on the very upper part, believe me, it's so accurate the interlocking, but beside that, the size of the rocks will be bigger and bigger, and just on the very upper part are really huge. Piece. Up there, believe me, the size of the boulders are so huge, as minimum 40 tons, the minimum weight. The terraces had some important purposes or functions to plant crops by one hand, and by the other hand to control erosion, because Incas always, they used to look for rocky areas. Why rocky areas? Because they integrated into the structure the natural rock formations. Just right there you have the best example. You can see this huge rock formation and is in between the other terraces that they use for farming, but by the other hand to give stability. Why? They should have really strong foundation for the main buildings up there. It is why these buildings last so many years because have a really strong foundation by one hand and also the houses has a really special shape. Trapezoid shape. The doorways, windows, niches has the trapezoid shape and inward inclination. This will give a really strong stability and will resist in a better way earthquakes or tremors. They just follow the natural profile of the rock. It is another important aspect. Also, in order to link this part with the other one, on the very upper part there is a trail. Always Incas plan network of roads, not only in the whole territory, also in every place there was a network of roads. In the whole territory there were at least over 23,000 miles of network of roads. And to link these two areas for sure was easier. From here too you can see the other houses, granaries or storehouses. What we are observing right now is mainly the front wall. How are inside? Has an underneath layer and these layers are mainly big rocks. The second layer has gravel. The third layer is sand. The last layer where we are is soil, dirt. But you imagine the labor to build the wall, then to fill it, to bring sand, because sand they should bring or from the river banks or if not from the Pacific Ocean, and dirt, soil. These rocks are from here, but the one that you will see very, very soon on the very upper part are not from here. Why I'm stopping here to show you these pieces because it has this interior cross section and as soon as we will be up there you will see how the size of the rocks will be bigger and bigger and bigger and how the work will be finer and finer. Just yes, right here you can see how was the labor with these stone hangers and uh, patience and experience because the best stone masons, they were the ones that 
were in charge of this accurate work. The angles are so precise. And if you see this work, and if you compare with that one that is really, really fine, is finer, still this one is rougher. But as soon as we will get a little bit higher, you will see the size of the rocks are bigger, is more accurate, and the pattern or the profile is nicer because that is part of the main foundation they built up to set just right up there the main holy area. Well, okay, now that we know a lot about the beautiful structure in front of us, it's time to make the climb. It's one of those things that might look hard, but later you will be very pleased, very satisfied that you made the climb and got up to the top to look at this beautiful site. And this climb is especially worthwhile because the stonework that we're seeing here at this Ollantay Tambo ceremonial area gets better and better as you climb to the top, as our guide has been describing. The stones get larger and more beautifully cut and more perfectly fit together. And plus, when you're up at the top, you get a beautiful view looking out across the village and across the Urubamba Valley, all of which makes it really worthwhile. And you can stop and rest along the way if you're having any difficulty climbing. There's no rush. We have plenty of time. We've got the afternoon. So you might as well take a hike and enjoy the sight to the utmost. How huge are the boulders? This doorway was in progress and it's really interesting to show you because you can see how they work at the angles, mm -hmm. the shape trapezoid doorway. You can see the indentations to work to give this shape. And you can see the accurate interlocking. Researchers are not yet agree about the purpose of these protrusions, but engineers and architects consider these were handles. There is an indentation on this. Also, they could set some kind of crowbars or hard sticks to cling in order to work or to get the accurate angles to fit. This is my friend Han. I have different color. This different color, blue one, orange. How much is offered for you? No, no gracias. Besides the white corn, the smaller, the